This video concerns the repair of the ignition for the uh, Miller uh, 2E welder and the Tecumseh OH160, OH180 engines. This is part one of three parts. Concerns the stator and some testing that should be done before you remove the SSI from the engine. Uh, sometimes I get a, a, an SSI to fix and put it on the engine simulator and it works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So we're going to talk a little bit about testing. This is the stator. It comes underneath the flywheel. If you haven't had the flywheel off, you probably haven't seen it. It's got a, a bunch of heavy coils on these poles for generating a current for charging the battery. And uh, these are not so many turns, but a heavy gauge wire. There's two white uh, poles over here for charging the capacitor in the ignition system. Uh, this puts out several hundred volts, has got lots of turns of wire, and it's a relatively fine wire. So this is what's called the stator. Before you, you test your ignition, now on the connector for the stator, the AC output for charging the battery is on the two outboard uh, pins on this connector. The center pin goes to the ignition switch and is used to kill the engine uh, to shut it down. Uh, it does that by shorting out the, uh, the power that goes to the uh, ignition module through this, this connector here. This, this goes to the SSI and when it's grounded out, you don't get a spark. So a lot of times, uh, a guy will put in a voltage regulator, and after he did so, he, the ignition is dead. So something like that. And the wire between here, the center pin, and the switch gets shorted out to ground somewhere, and the ignition doesn't work. So he blames it on the SSI. <clears throat> so before you test it, disconnect this connector. You can live without charging the battery for a few minutes. That's no problem. And this will totally isolate the tractor or machine wiring from the engine wiring. So you want you want to separate those so if the, the SSI fails, you know that it's in the SSI area, you know, <clears throat> not the wirings halfway to the, the switch. As an afterthought, uh, I'll inject here for a very easy, simple test, the uh, the resistance of those charge coils on a stator is 132 ohms. So you can very easily check that by uh, just uh, disconnecting the stator from the uh, I showed previously. There's a black wire that goes onto the, the SSI right here. You can uh, disconnect that black wire and that will put you right in here so you can measure the resistance of the uh, charge coil. Just verify that's good almost never goes bad. Okay, what I have here is a is an ohmmeter and a, a resistor. The resistor is uh, about 5,000 ohms and uh, uh, the scaling is set up for uh, hundreds of ohms so if I measure it I can get a reading here you can see it's just a, a little bit above 5, 5 and 550 maybe So on the SSI, uh, we want to measure the resistance of the uh, secondary winding of the pulse transformer, the ignition coil. And I have one side of the ohmmeter on the case, and the other side we go in here, put it on a probe, and I get no response whatsoever. So if I test the meter, press it over here, that we should get something, some kind of an indication. So. This, this uh, ignition circuit is open somewhere. So um, very often the, we have a bad connection either at the connector here that goes to the spark plug or down here where the spark plug wire uh, goes to the uh, pulse transformer. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this connector off. I don't particularly like these kind of connectors. The uh, Briggs & Stratton connectors are much better ones. And 
I cut it in the back here in case we wanted had to use, reuse it. Put it back on. We could uh, put it back on with some some tape. So. If we go back to the meter, yeah, we can now put the uh, check the connection right on this brass thing here. We get no response whatsoever, no response whatsoever. So I'm going to go into the wire, the stranded wire in here. We still get no response. Check my meter. Yep. Okay, so there's no response. So. Uh, we're going to have to go to the other end of the wire and check there. Okay, I uh, used whatever force is necessary to pull the spark plug wire out of this connection. And we need to get to the other side of that connection down here by the pulse transformer. So I cleaned it, as much of that out as I could. I'm going to have to go down in the shop and, and make a cut in the... Uh, epoxy so we can remove some of the epoxy see what's under there okay later in a in a video there's uh, lots of footage on uh, how to remove epoxy so I'm not going to focus on that here but I did I made a couple of cuts in this uh, epoxy here I drilled a couple of holes at either end and I want to clear this out of here so I can see what I'm drilling into next time anyway. Oh no. Okay, I'm going to have to go back to the shop and uh, do some more cutting. Okay, so uh, I drilled these holes here on the ends a little deeper and I made another thin slice over here in this direction so I can try and uh, break some more of this epoxy out of here. Well, digging around in here, it looks like this material here is uh, a casing on the spark plug wire from here. So, if this is where the wire went, this, this is probably not the pulse transformer, but the wire. So, I'm going to make a couple of cuts in here and uh, see if we can remove some of that. Okay, I uh, drilled a little hole down here where I think the end of the spark plug wire might be. And I made some cuts here. Probably a little deep, a little aggressive. But uh, if we don't succeed here, then uh, this thing is junk anyway. So, uh, voila, look at here. So, yeah, that looks like some kind of a receptacle for the end of the spark plug wire. There's the brass nail. Okay, here's what we were looking for. You can uh, see the little brass nail here. And 
we uh, I think we can get enough on it right now to uh, to get an ohmmeter measurement. I got a measurement. Okay, there it is. It's about uh, you know, 5,000, maybe 600, 800 ohms. So the uh, the problem with the bad connection is right here. So what we need to do is put a, a new spark plug wire on it. Um, in order to put a new spark plug wire on it, I'm going to have to clean this up a little bit. This is an old spark plug wire casing. I think that's pretty well cleared out. Okay, so we're going to put in a replacement spark plug wire. Okay, I want to tin the uh, that nail that this wire is supposed to be attached to because I plan to solder it. So I want to make sure that this is ready for for solder. Yeah, it seems to take solder okay. The material that I use to uh, do it to uh, mount the spark plug wire in the in that hole and to backfill it as E6000. It's an industrial adhesive that I got from uh, Lowe's and it has excellent electrical properties. Okay, the uh, unit I'm using here is not a 610906 but a 610748. It looks a little bit different but uh, uh, unfortunately I didn't have a 610906 that I knew of with, uh, that needed a spark wire so I just used this. So You might find some, a little bit of differences in the way the spark plug is mounted in a 610906. Okay, I uh, checked the connector that uh, goes to the spark plug and I found a bad connection there. So, replaced that, ran it on the engine simulator and uh, it seems to work just fine. Puts out nice sparks. So, I think this one is fixed. I have a box of, uh, of old uh, 610906's and I went through there looking for one that uh, had a, an open spark plug wire. I actually found one. And I'm thinking that uh, for somebody who finds that that might be their problem, they, uh, they would want to see what a 610906 looks like inside. So uh, this one, check it here. I got no response on my ohm meter with the, uh, uh, the ohm meter. I check it here. So this... Uh, the spark plug circuit is open somewhere. Um, I have already uh, prepared this, making some cuts uh, down on the, in the shop where I keep my mess down there. And uh, uh, so I prepared this to begin to remove the epoxy so we can both discover what, what lies underneath. I take this piece off first. Okay, whatever is in there, some kind of black plastic. Uh, instead of being white, it's black. So, anyway, yep, here's our spark plug wire, just like on the other unit. Take it back there. Um, so, I'll probably take it downstairs and, and uh, well, this time I'm going to try to just pull the spark plug wire out all in one piece to uh, save me a lot of effort cleaning it all up. Uh, so, I'll, let's go down to the shop and I'll remove some more of this. Okay, on... Uh, the other unit, I inadvertently made a cut in the uh, socket to, for that receives the uh, the spark plug wire, and that allowed us to fold it open. So that worked out pretty good. So I did that again, and I'm gonna just try and uh, 
particularly for purposes of the video, lift this uh, lifts this part of it apart. So here's the uh, here's the spark plug wire. I don't know what. Oh, that's trash. Okay, and um, I'm gonna try to uh, hmm, see what I can do to pull it out in one piece. Okay, put a pull. Oh, I pulled off easy. Pulled off really easy. Okay, uh, here's the brass nail. Like before, and it's all covered with rust. It's all rusty. Might have something to do with this, the seal on the epoxy around there, uh, loosening things up. So um, we're gonna have to spend some time and effort to clean that up before we can can uh, make a new, put a new spark plug wire on it. Okay, I I scraped and scraped and scraped uh, that rusty iron. A pin that was supposed to be made out of brass, and uh, I finally took a, a little pipe dope brush and went into an old battery waiting to go to the junkyard and put some battery acid on it, brushed it, let it set for a while, scraped and scraped and scraped and uh, washed all that out, blew it out with compressed air, and I'm going to see if we can get uh, this this uh, rusty nail to. Uh, to take some solder. It doesn't look too bad right now. So, but you're going to have to make sure this is clean enough to take solder or you're not going to make any kind of a connection when it comes to the new solder. Ah, there it is. Yeah, that tinned up nice. Okay, good. I'm surprised. Okay, I've got some spark plug wire. Uh, came from Stens and uh, new stranded wire. The Sten's number on this is, uh, in case you need some for your shop, 4044 space 35. So uh, uh, that's my supply of new stranded wire. <coughs> I'm going to trim about a quarter of an inch off. Put the new wire in there. Put it down there in contact with the nail, and then we're going to solder that up. So, uh, do a lot better job than the OEM. Okay, uh, another thing we want to do is uh, test this to see if it's going to correct the problem. Home meter over here. Check on the meter. Guess what? Still no connection. Still open. Okay, so if it's still open, the secondary winding in, in the pulse transformer is probably open. Or, okay, this is what the circuit diagram for the pulse transformer looks like. The spark plug is here. This wire that we just pulled out is here. The, uh, the little brass pin is right in there. And after thinking about this a while, I was thinking if, if the spark plug wire part of the brass pin is all rusty, maybe the the winding part, part uh, the other end of that pin, is probably rusty too. So the, the open circuit may be right here on the other end of this winding. I don't have time now to to excavate uh, very very carefully the epoxy and everything to check the other end of that pin but if I do that I'll, I'll uh, do it in part three.